Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And you join me, yes, in the war room. Um, I will still be filming here in the future. I'm just filming here today because the new studio is still under construction. Um, anyway, I thought I'd start off by sharing uh, a few, well, two incredibly cool vintage Hamiltons I found on eBay. Uh, this piece, if I just, uh, where is it, if I scroll there. Look at that day-date display with a 24-hour scale and you see the different time zones. Very, very cool. An automatic, there we go, um, from quite a reputable seller. Uh, but actually, I wanted to show you, where is it? Mm, there we go. This one. Now this is going for 200 bucks. It's a thinomatic, incredible value. Look, look at the lovely dwarfin hands. It looks, judging by the patina, it looks uh, untouched. But inside we have uh, the Caliber 628 and it has a little micro rotor there because of course Hamilton bought, I believe they bought them in the 60s. They bought the Buren watch company who were famous, I think invented the micro rotor just before Universal Geneve. So very, very cool. Lovely, tiny little, look at that. Oh absolute class I love the strap they've put it on um, so for 200 bucks you really I'm a gold filled you can't really beat it absolute pure class anyway guys let's roll the intro and get on with the show Welcome to the show. Today I'm going to share my five reasons why I believe Hamilton have the best vintage watches from about the $100 to $500 range. Now this is in response to a question, well actually a lot of questions I get asked almost daily of where to start. I mean it can be bewildering. There's so many great brands. I mean we've got Omega, we've got Longines, uh, Vintage Doxa, what else? Timex of course, Smiths, um, oh, the, the list is endless, but I really do feel, and hopefully this video will illustrate the, the, the point, or rather points, why Hamilton is the champion at this price range. Before I get into this video, I've got to do wristwatch check. I am actually wearing the Navi Harbour. Vintage inspired uh, new release from Timex. I have reviewed it, I think last month, or maybe it was the month before. Quite simple quartz. A pilot's watch with a, a rotating bezel for, for to, to track a second time zone. I have reviewed it. Smaller 38 millimeter case, I do believe, fits me like a glove. Still having fun. I bought it for, to review it, uh, but I'm still wearing and having fun. I might give away this watch uh, as a prize, uh, um, but I thought I just might, <laughs> might as well enjoy it while I still got it. It is an absolute charmer. Now, this video also kind of was inspired by a recent pickup. This is a 1953 vintage Hamilton, uh, what's called the Rodney. An absolutely stunning little piece. I was gonna review it, but then I thought, this watch just perfectly illustrates everything that Hamilton has to offer at this price range. Now, before I get into my five reasons, uh, I'll just give you a quick little uh, mini review, let's say, of this, um, this little classy stunner. Hamilton introduced this uh, quite prolific and very popular model in the 50s. It ran from 53 all the way to 1964. Comes in several different dial arrangements. This is the quadrant dial. There is one with numerals, there's one with numerals and a minute track. And I believe the fourth one, a Masonic version with little Masonic symbols around the dial. There was even a left-handed model with the crown on the left side at the nine o'clock. Um, this became a very popular watch for Hamilton, probably one of the most popular watches of their 1950s releases. It was common as what's called the presentation watch and often could be found, especially in the used market, with anniversary engravings or to commemorate loyal employees 
or employers. Over its 11 year period, this particular watch came with an 18 joule movement. It started with the 748, which is what mine has, then progressed to the 735, and then finally the 736. These were all manual wind, uh, beautifully little made in America movements, quite dependable, very simple three-handers, no date, nothing like that. My particular favorite is the quadrant dial, so we have slightly different colored segments. So on the top left is matching with the bottom right, the top right is matching with the bottom left. Then we have these diamond-shaped faceted indices, a double stick marker at the 12, and then at the three, six, and nine, a single baton marker. They are beautifully done in gold tone. We have leaf style hands, very simple seconds hand, and then a tiny little dotted minute track running around the outside. It comes in this gorgeous kind of UFO shaped case with these very deco-ish, slight throwback to the earlier era with the lugs. It's a 34 millimeter in diameter. We have a thickness of 10 millimeters, so nice and thin. Lug to lug, we're looking at 45 millimeters, and then the lug width, 16. Now mine is a 10 karat gold filled case with a snapback case back, beautifully curved, very curvaceous, wonderfully domed acrylic crystal. We do have a signed crown with the old school 50s style Hamilton logo engraved. The action to it, oh, it's just, I'm not sure if you can hear that, let's just, oh. <laughs> Uh, it's a pleasure to wind. Mine came on this very nice calfskin soft and supple strap. It's not the original strap and you can tell because the buckle is a slightly different tone of gold but it complements the watch very nicely. Now I'm very fortunate enough to find this in entirely original, well apart from the strap, condition. There is some patina on the dial but that's actually a good thing because something about the Rodneys that I should point out is when they refinish the dials, sometimes they, they can't replicate those dots, the dot markings on the, on the edge, and it loses some of its character, and also the slight variation in coloration of the quadrants of the dial. Uh, I've seen butchered redials of this. Thankfully, the watch dealers I, I deal with always uh, have them in the original condition. And yeah, it's a little worn, uh, but I, it's, it's such an endearing piece. Now, I bought this not for myself, I actually bought this as a gift and I thought well before I, I give it to my, my uh, it's for a family member before I give it to them I might as well review it. Now there we go now look at that as a dress watch very nice and thin suits my smaller wrist perfectly gorgeous and the way it plays with the light different quadrants of the dial those beautiful applied diamond markers very very stylish and classy and Oh, I, just, I especially love the, the way Hamilton, it, there's, there's no markings on the dial except for Hamilton at the 12 o'clock and the way they cleverly incorporated the eye in Hamilton with the crosshair, very cool. Subtle touch, but this watch is all about subtlety. It's all about being understated and classy. It has a wonderful presence and it looks of its age, it really does. Anyway, without further ado, uh, let's discuss my five reasons why I feel Hamilton absolutely rule the roost at this price range. So first of all, well, it's heritage. It's an iconic brand, as we all know, but they have so much to their name. 2017, it will be the 125th anniversary of the brand. It was founded in 1892. Now it's obviously part of the Swatch Group, as we all know and love, but for the majority of its time, it was an American-based uh, watch company. Originally from Lancaster in Pennsylvania, and if you look it up, that you can see their beautiful old factory. But its list of innovation, its list of um, accomplishments and just the amount of iconic watches to their name. They've also been featured in over 400 movies. I've mentioned this many, many times. If you look at my series on watches and movies, Hamilton's always in there, even the James Bond franchise. They supplied watches uh, for the military in World War One and World War Two. Not just the American army, but uh, the Allies as well. Watches issued also in Vietnam. If you're into your military timepieces, in fact, you can find beautiful, stunning uh, 
not not only watches but and pocket watches obviously but you can find World War II clocks from cockpits on eBay and, and some of them still working. Just incredible. So the variety of, of timekeeping devices uh, is quite astounding. They also uh, made the first electronic watch which was the Hamilton 500. This was back in 1957. All of their watches up until 1969 were American made. Now they did uh, buy in some ETAs during the 60s. You'll find them in the Dateline automatics especially. And it's funny how, how eventually they became part of Swatch, but they, they, this was before that. And not to mention, you know, a ton, a slew of iconic watches um, we only have to mention the, the Ventura, for example, worn by His Majesty Elvis of Presley, of course. <laughs> the King. So, uh, you know, hugely iconic. If we go back even further, before wristwatches, they made exquisite pocket watches. I think 50% of the, the American railroad the industry in America bought Hamilton watches. That's a huge market share. Not only on land, but also marine chronometers, beautiful marine chronometers for the American Navy and Merchant Navy as well. So the heritage is there, and I, I do feel it's important. You know, when you look at the Hamilton name, yes, now it's part of Swatch, uh, made in Switzerland, but I still uh, attribute that name to this incredible rich lineage uh, and heritage of, of watchmaking. Okay, so that was number five. Number four, the sheer amount of variety available on the vintage market. It's, it's almost overwhelming. It is overwhelming. Very few companies have as many watches to offer within one brand. If you're into your military timepieces, Hamilton have incredible deals to offer. Very eclectic mix. In the 50s we have, and honestly guys, there's hundreds and hundreds of different watches. Hamilton really were <laughs> churning them out in the 50s. We've got to remember this is the boom time uh, of America. So there was the Thinomatic, which is an, a favorite of mine, extremely elegant, sophisticated dress watches. There's the Carson, the Dotson, the Glendon, the Ramsey. There's a whole plethora. In the 60s, you got the Dateline, which is a huge, uh, just in itself, that line is, is massive. Yeah, where do I start? It ran all the way up until the 70s, I think. And even in, in that line of watches, you, you can choose from very minimalist, to quite fun and very 70s styled. But let's not forget, we have to mention that the other day, I saw some of their more contemporary watches, incredible bargains. I, I saw a Linwood chronograph, little 38 millimeter, Valju 7750 based, extremely 50s styled for $495. I mean, very difficult to, to beat the, the, the value for money. Actually, that's the next point, but we'll get on to that in just a moment. Okay, so that was point number four. Number three, the timeless style and elegance of these timepieces. The 50s was what, half a century? <laughs> More than half a century ago, they are still just as elegant, just as sophisticated, just as enthralling to look at. It stood the test of time, and that is a really good indicator that it will stand the test of time for another half a century. The playful yet refined nature of, especially the, I, I feel the 50s era in particular, confident and post-war swagger of America, the age of the Cadillac. We still see some of that elegance and some of those design traits in the modern Hamiltons. Even they recognize that was the golden era for them, the, the 50s and 60s, without a shadow of a doubt. And not to mention, uh, you see ha uh, Hamilton's being worn in Mad Men. So, I mean, <laughs> that just cements it, you know, that's the tick of approval. I mean, you, you don't, there's not that many stylish, as stylish shows on television as Mad Men. And I actually got to see, I think, the Spudnik worn by character Pete Campbell uh, at the Mad Men exhibition a long time ago. Anyway, so you can wear them with pride. They have that sophistication. I mean, this is the perfect dress watch. It really is. Okay, so let's move on to my second point, and it is value for money. In terms of what Hamilton have to offer, it's very difficult to beat. Made in America uh, movements that are uh, reasonably robust, they have a quality to them, 
Oh, okay, yeah, sure. It's not going to compete with modern watches. They are fragile, as any vintage watch will be. But this is still running very well. I mean, okay, not chronometer certified, but it's keeping impeccably good time. Plus 12, 15 seconds a day. I mean, come on, it's, it's from 1953, or was it 1954? Regardless, it's still performing admirably. Come on, for 200 bucks, it's difficult to beat. There's also a lot of spare parts uh, for Hamilton out there. Um, the one advantage of Hamilton putting just so many watches out there is that there's no shortage of, of great deals. Now, if you recall a few weeks ago, actually last month, I bought a vintage Amiga for not much more than this Hamilton. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why don't I consider Amiga the best at this price range? I actually consider Amiga the best at the slightly higher price range. With Amiga, you kind of at the bottom of the barrel. You really need to spend a little bit more. Same goes for Longines and some of the more uh, prestigious Swiss brands. With Hamilton, you're getting the best from their golden era. So I think it does win in, in this price ca category. Also, we gotta say, it's, it's one of the best affordable ways into a, a, a brand that is, or has got, a serious horological muscle behind it. And one last thing to mention while we talk about value. This is the same, actually it's cheaper than a lot of fashion watches. I know I, I go on a bit of an anti-fashion watch crusade, but come on, I spent uh, just over $200 on this, same as, as some Daniel Wellingtons, um, certainly I've, I've seen Michael Kors watches cost more. Um, so, you know, you're getting an, a made in America movement. Actually, the whole watch is made in America. Value for money, definitely my second point. Okay, my last point. Now, this is a slightly abstract, inexplicable thing to, you certainly can't quantify it, but it's the feeling the watch gives you. Now, recently I rewatched one of my favorite Woody Allen films, a wonderful movie that really captured something that this watch <laughs> kind of makes me think of, and it's called the Golden Age Syndrome. Uh, this is, of course, Midnight in Paris. If you haven't seen it, I, I totally recommend it. But one of the themes that this watch and the film perfectly capture is that Golden Age Syndrome, the belief that things were better. Uh, maybe not you know, in, in the quality of our lives and, and, and the freedom of, 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 of people, but uh, politically or whatever, but I'm talking about stylistically and you know before watch making really got outsourced overseas this watch it embodies the golden era of not just hamilton but america stylistically where people really took pride in how they dressed their appearance the cars were just beautiful everything was designed so so beautiful there was real attention given to things it's very difficult to replicate that feeling uh, there's never-ending slew of reissues. Yes, they make a watch have a, a, a certain charm to it. Just can't duplicate what this, this watch gives you. It instantly brings you back. I start thinking, oh, who, who wore this? Imagine the stories this watch could tell. Yes, it's a little battered and, and, and there's worn in, but I love that. Watch salesmen use this phrase, the romance of a piece. While sometimes it can be a little cheesy and they use it, you know, because they want to sell your watch, if you are wearing it as a dress watch, it's a great conversation starter. It instantly transports you to a bygone era. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, that is my five reasons why I believe Hamilton have the most to offer uh, in this price range. I do urge you to have a look on the used market. Um, just incredible value for money. Uh, it's gonna be sad to give this watch away, but I, I, I'm happy because I know the person that's gonna receive it is gonna adore it. They're an equally as classy person, um, and this watch definitely has class to it. So, um, yeah, they're gonna be chuffed to bits with this. Please let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, especially uh, vintage watches you recommend at this price range. Let's try and help out as many people out there as we can. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.